Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here, and you are on the new show, The OTT, so let's let's get started. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here. Welcome to the OTT over at Geekazine. OTT stands for Over the Top Television, where we're going to talk a little bit more about how you can cut your cable how you can use the internet to watch all the TV shows that you want to, what's new on the boxes and what's new, and we're going to be talking to industry professionals and doing interviews and, and so on and so forth. We had an interview all lined up, but things happen, uh, personal issues, and they had to step out last minute. So instead of, uh, instead of leaving it blank for another week, I thought I'd uh, give you another part of what I like to do with the OTT, and that's run through the news and actually talk a little bit about content. And one of the things about the OTT that we're going to be talking about is, is content anyway. How to produce shows like this one, the OTT, for something like a Roku, for an Apple TV, for a Google TV, for a boxy box, for a pop box, for all the, all the new boxes that are going to be coming out and everybody that's going to be jumping into the over-the-top television space. First of all, let's get through some of the news here in over-the-top television land. First of all, Internet Explorer launches their real-time RTM uh, at South by Southwest. They, they announced that they were going to do that uh, a couple days ago. Of course, South by Southwest is a big interactive music and film area for down in Austin, Texas. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you can there's a lot of great stuff that comes out of South by Southwest. The interactive part apparently just overshadowed the music part of South by Southwest in attendance, which was is amazing. So, but anyway, interactive movies are starting to meld into one. Of course, we've got over the top television. Getting out your movies and getting out your video is is easy, easier than before. So anyway, Internet Explorer launches uh, RTM of Internet Explorer Nine at South by Southwest. Not really as much of an over the top television thing, however. The fact that Internet Explorer 9 is going towards the HTML5 standard definitely is something to talk about when we're talking about setting up standards for video and standards for over-the-top television itself. One of the, uh, with HTML5, they use the H.264 codec, which, of course, Google has pretty much bashed because of the fact that it's not an open-source codec. It's actually... It's actually owned by somebody, and every time H.264 is used, somebody has to get paid. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's, that's why uh, Google wanted to do something a little bit different, but everybody was adapting to H.264. So I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So you, uh, we might be good on this, but, you know, you never know. Next week, somebody could come out with a, with a codec that could blow everything away, and all of a sudden you're saving space and, t and time and everything. It just, it, 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 it's, it's a crapshoot at that point. So, but the whole point is that Internet Explorer 9 is coming out. Their new version, of course, they've been beta, betaing the, the version. It's now an RTM, so it's a release to manufacturing. That's what RTM stands for. And you can uh, download it and install it. If you have Internet, I think you need either Vista or Windows 7. Maybe it's just Windows 7, but uh, either Vista or Windows 7, I believe, is, is, is what it is. So you can download Internet Explorer 9 and check that out. It'll be big on HTML5, which is going to shape the way we're going to be watching our TV soon. And I wouldn't be surprised if down the road somebody would make a, make a box, a set-top box, that would be rich in HTML5 and maybe even use uh, Internet Explorer 9 for that. You never know. It's uh, whatever everybody ends up doing, and that's, that's the important part. So... Um, but you can check it out. Go and you do some searches, of course. So we get this from Beta News, so you can uh, check that out there. All right. Going over to the LA Times, they're talking about I Apple iPad 2. Once again, not really. It is kind of over-the-top television news, but yet not. Uh, of course, uh, last week, the iPad 2, Apple uh, announced and launched their I Apple iPad 2. People waited in line. They had to wait till 5 p.m. to finally get the Apple iPad 2. And then they basically ran out. They they sold them all. <laughs> it's all it's a sellout. So, uh, very impressive that Apple uh, has that initiative to get to the next level. Now, the coolest thing about the Apple iPad 2, which is what I what I'm I'm going to check out 
in the next couple of days. I got a friend who's got an iPad too, and we're going to play around with it, is how you can create content using the Apple iPad 2. Now that it's got a front-facing and a rear-facing camera, my understanding is that uh, that uh, forward-facing camera is a 720p camera, whereas the front camera is just VGA style. But my understanding is you can you can record a lot of video on that and uh, and go from there and then go into the movie making software and produce the video. It's not going to be stellar high definition video, but it's going to be enough for you to get your stuff your your thoughts across. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody was walking down the street with their iPad 2 and did a daily video cast of them walking down the street saying what they think, what they like, what they don't like. That's the cool thing about creating content nowadays. It's actually very easy to do. And something like an iPad 2, $500, and all of a sudden you, you get a you get an attachment so you can hook up a microphone to it, and you, you got a good sound. You might have some good video. All of a sudden you have citizen journalism right there. And, of course, they can use those iPad 2s to, to record events. Like, for instance, here in Madison, Wisconsin, the big thing is the uh, is the state budget. And protesters were up at the Capitol all during these uh, these last couple weeks, and they've been protesting big. And people have gotten video off of their iPhone, off of their Android phone, off and off of now they can do it off of their tablet. So it's amazing what we can do. And high definition, 720p, but it's still better than nothing. So iPad 2 coming out, very interesting stuff. We've got uh, a, a vid, little video that you can watch over at... Uh, LA Times blogs. A little bit of OTT news here. Uh, Apple TV gets MLB TV and NBA League Pass. Uh, Roku also has got received the end. They already had the uh, the uh, Major League ba- Baseball before, but now they got NBA. So now your Roku, your Boxy, and your Apple TV all have the ability to watch baseball, hockey. Uh, well, maybe not hockey on Apple TV, but Baseball and basketball on your over-the-top television. You basically download the application, and then you pay the subscription fee, and then you can watch your baseball and your basketball. And on the Roku, you can watch hockey, too. And on the Boxy, Boxy also, I believe, also has hockey, the NHL content. So now, this is, this is the game changer, folks, right here. The sports are getting into this over-the-top television because now they can bypass, they can bypass the local networks to get that season ticket out to you, and that's going to change a lot of things because now you'll be able to get stats, you'll be able to get scores, and you'll get to be able to watch your favorite game, whatever the game is, right onto your little device. Once football happens, and yeah, you know, well, you'll have golf, you'll need golf, you'll have football, and uh, even. As well, this is debatable whether it's a sport or not, but professional wrestling. Once all of these get onto these over the top television boxes, it's going to be tough to say that uh, that that cable is still the way to go. I don't know. We got a link over on uh, techland.time.com if you want to check that out. Finally, the Google TV is getting their own application store. Yes, uh, they're going to be getting an application store so you can create apps. Uh, basically, I guess, games and, and productivity applications and stuff like that. Uh, they announced it a couple of weeks ago. We talked about it on the Geekazine Weekly podcast. Um, they were at OTTCon, which happened the week before. They said it's going to happen. They're going to get their own app store. Of course, every every over-the-top television will probably have their own app store sooner or later. Later. <laughs> so, uh, But uh, you'll see you'll see it happen very, very soon. On the Logitech review, on the uh, on the on the Google TV itself, so that's uh, pretty cool to see right there. We got a link over to PC Bank if you want to read the whole article there. All right, let's switch gears here a little bit, talk a little bit about the news. Let's talk about something specific, and this is about content creation. Now, you create your video, like for instance, right now I'm I'm creating the video. I got my computer all set up. I got I got a copy of Wirecast running. Um, I'm running through my camera, and you're, you're hearing me through my audio, and everything's good here. But now I've created a video, and I need to take that video and put it online. Now, it's not going to be like 
uh, something you put on your server. In fact, this is the biggest misconception is a lot of people think that, okay, once I create a video, I have a website. I can always just put the video on that website and everything will be good. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Even with audio casts, you can't really mix the two together. You have to have one area for your website and one area for your media. And you're either paying for that area on your media or you're just really not getting that many hits for that. So it, it sometimes, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't uh, for that. But if you get a video that goes viral, that video could take down your website if you've got, or, or audio for that matter. If your audio go, goes viral, you will have to, you, your, your website might go down simply because of the fact that, I'm just typing up a little URL here. I just thought of one more link that I wanted to add to this. Uh, you might, you might, your website might go down simply because of the fact that a lot of people are watching your video. And a, a website that goes down is not something that you want. You want to keep your website up as much as possible. So that's why you want to split your audio video with your website. Your website should be one place and your media should be in another place. Okay, well, that's all well and good. But where do I put my video? Where do I put my audio? Good question. There's many different places to go. Audio is easier, a little bit easier than video because I can compress down audio. So a 10-minute show is going to be two, three, four megabytes in size. I just have to put it up on a, up on a server, and, and they could get 1,000 downloads, and that's, that bandwidth is just, it's, it's going to be, it's not going to be as big as, as it is. But, you know, you took a 10-minute video, we're talking 300 megabytes in size, especially if you're doing something in a high definition like 720p. All of a sudden, you've got new concerns because these are not 50 meg videos. These are one to 400 meg videos, and the longer that you do a podcast or a video cast, the bigger the file is. So how do you counter that? Well, one of two ways. You could either compress down your file, so it looks like a big glob of glue, I guess, <laughs> a big blurry glob of glue uh, that when people watch it, or you can keep it in a higher quality and upload it into places that deal with video and audio. Now, audio, we'll, we won't do too much on the audio end. There's, there's many different places that you can go. Uh, you can go to Libsyn. You can go to uh, Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y, podcasting. You can, you can find some local sources that, that does local podcasting. Um, I know Mevio does podcasting and video casting, for that matter. But the one thing, the reason why I'm not going to mention Mevio, it's actually a very simple reason, because Mevio is not in the OTT realm. When you go on the web and you go to Mevio.com, you can get audio and video like without a problem. But if you go to your Roku, your Apple TV, your your uh, your your Boxy, it's on Apple TV because they're they got to go into iTunes. But it's not on Roku. I don't think it's on. I don't think Mevio's on Boxy yet. So they haven't really delved into that level of over the top television. They're letting that ship sail by. I don't know why. Anyway, that's a different story. Whole point is this. <laughs> we want to talk about things that'll get you onto these boxes. We're going to start with the one that seems to be the most active in this space, and it's called blip.tv. Now, here's my blip.tv dashboard. I actually have, uh, I use for video blip.tv. It's got so many different options. It's just amazing. Well, uh, first of all, I got a pro account. Pro account's actually fairly cheap. I think I paid like eight dollars a month or something like that for it. So, and I've got, I've got a ton of videos. I think I had, uh, yeah, two hundred twenty-four videos in the last year since I really started getting serious about my videos. I got two hundred twenty-four videos, and these are all my videos. Um, I can go to all my episodes and check them out. And as I scroll down, I'll see more. Um, all my OTT stuff, all my weekly podcasts the five tech things, all the stuff I do outside, uh, HP Tech Forum, Blog World, uh, a little bit of CES stuff in there, and I keep going down, you know, and I've got a whole bunch of stuff and a lot of great great uh, video views on there so I can tell who's been watching it, where they've been watching it, how they've been watching it, so on and so forth. So 
Um, I can set up these playlists. So I've got the Geekazine back channel. I've got the five tech things. There's 42 in the five tech things. Uh, five in the reviews, uh, seven in promos. The podcast has 39 episodes. Blog World has three. The OTT, of course, has five. Well, soon to be six with this one. So I've, I, I have a lot here from the dashboard just to check to see what I can do with my videos, where, where my video, how my videos are playing. But I do more through the distribution area of Blip.TV because with this distribution, I can actually connect to a lot of different aggregators, a lot of different uh, uh, systems, including Roku and Boxy. In fact, I'm uh, configured on the Boxy. I'm configured on DivX TV. I'm configured on Roku, Samsung, and Vizio. It's an approval process, so you basically fill out the form and you get approved for it. Pop Box Popcorn Hour is one of the other boxes out there, and they just, uh, about a month ago, y you were able to apply for it. So I'm waiting for my approval on there, and I'm ra waiting for my approval on TiVo. I, I don't think I got accepted on Sony, but I think that that's basically because of the fact that they weren't adding anything new just yet. But otherwise, I can, I've can. i got everything, uh, Internet Archive, which we'll be talking about in a little bit here, Vimeo, uh, YouTube. Uh, Vimeo is another pay service where you can upload video to, and you can pair those two together. Uh, I can go to AOL. It, it aggregates to AOL Video, to Mefedia, to Blinks, to Vodpod, and to iTunes. Uh, MySpace, uh, I don't have it. I have it configured for Facebook, but I don't use that too much. MySpace has a, a small problem with it, so I can't pair the two right there. And then, I've got, of course, I can put it to a blog, any blog I choose. I just have to set it up so it'll accept uh, to post the video there. I can message it to Twitter and a whole bunch more. So my video can push out to all these destinations, and I don't have to do a darn thing except just set it up, which is pretty cool. And, of course, with Blip.TV, you can go through their advertising. You can go through your own advertising. You can manage your players, so you can uh, create a Flash player where, with your own branding on it. And you can do a whole bunch more on it. So that's, that's one reason why I really like Blip is because you have – it's, it's very organized back there. So I can sit there, and I can say, okay, I want it to go to Facebook, and I want it to go to YouTube, and I want it to go to Roku, and I want it to go to Boxy. And then it comes back and it gives me a whole, whole host of statistics. On, uh, let me pull, pull up the statistics box and show that to you. All my statistics, it's loading up right now. It can tell, it tells me where I, where I see it, how my revenue comes in, if, if I use the advertising, how much money I'm going to be making, and so on and so forth. And it's not, there it goes. So basically, uh, and this little pie chart is saying that the the yellow is the people that watch my videos in blip dot, at blip.tv. The blue is everything else. Everything else. <laughs> that, you know, the YouTubes, the Rokus, the Boxies, so on and so forth. So I'll be able to, I can take this information and go back and I can say, hey, you know, thank you guys for watching on the Rokus. Thank you for watching on the Boxies. Thank you for watching at YouTube, so on and so forth. And that's all at blip.tv. They've got a free account, and, of course, they've got a pay account, so check out both of them. Now, speaking of YouTube, that's the next one we're going to talk about. Of course, we all know about YouTube. It's, uh, it's a part of Google, and they have a lot of great options for doing video. The biggest thing about YouTube is a couple months ago they lifted a lot of restrictions. Now, you've got to do – you've got to prove that you're not going to try and upload copyrighted material. And if your if your if your account is in good standing, then they'll let you upload larger files. Which was I was just I was so happy when that happened. Um, for but in the meantime, uh, if you don't have that ability, you can upload up to a 15 minute video, which is great. But once you get approved, once you get okayed to to upload even more, you could do one hour long shows and get it up on YouTube. Now, the YouTube is actually found on Roku and on Boxy as third-party applications. They don't always work that great, but they're part of the OTT system. So you can definitely get videos, put videos up here, 
and have them on your OTT device. Now, I've got, uh, actually, when I did my YouTube, I, I didn't go through Geekazine. I used a different name on there. So that's uh, a lot of people get a little bit confused on that, but that's, you know, it happens. So <laughs> bottom line is that these are all the videos on my, it, it's the name of the account is Animalian. But it is paired with Geekazine, and, and I, I put in everything that say Geekazine. So if you type in search for Geekazine, you'll find everything here. The latest one was the Super Tooth Disco Dance, which was the one I did a couple days ago, the review for the uh, Super Tooth Disco. And you can watch it. You can watch it in 360p all the way up to 720p because I record in 720p. So as, as you can see, uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, do the dance for that, so we won't, uh, we won't play that. But you can definitely upload your videos to YouTube, and they will play onto an over-the-top television set-top box. It's not as, it's not as, uh, you, you have to go find it to use it, but you can still go in that route. Now, if you really get serious, if you really want to start your own thing, then uh, you can get to a, a web service like an Amazon uh, EC2 service where you can configure your capacity, you can configure your speed, you can get... Uh, you're you're paying to put your videos up, but it's your sp spot for videos. So you can do whatever you want. You can create HTML5, which would then play advertising that you you get from advertisers to cover the costs, and then you play your videos. The one thing about Blip.tv is they pay you pennies, pretty much pennies on the video, um, as you put uh, ads in there. But of course, and they take a they take a a chunk out of that, which is understandable because they're they're procuring the advertisers and they're getting that all ready for you. Uh, Amazon, you if you have the knowledge to put it all together and do it yourself, then then you can definitely go through Amazon services or other services. You know, Rackspace has a service. I know, I believe GoDaddy has a service to push out your media in video format through there. So you can go to many different uh, options. Um, to set up your own stuff if you're very familiar with all the all the bells and whistles of of a service like Amazon like GoDaddy um like uh excuse me like Rackspace and so on and so forth so now if you're if you're not doing a, if you're doing something that's got a little bit more structure to it if you're actually making episodes episodic stuff like uh TV shows and stuff like that you might want to check out stuff like uh coldcast.tv where they go there we go coldcast.tv they are they are over the top television systems that actually look for people that make episodic uh, tv shows in fact a couple shows i've been watching um animation block which is a brand new one they have assisted living which has been actually been there on their 7th season 8th season they've been uh, doing videos uh, 6 minutes at a time for about two to three years now. Uh, you have Blue Movies, which is about uh, it's a, basically a comedy about the rising pornography company in San Verna Fernando Valley. Um, Tyranny, which is about a guy who's in his own mind. I, I watched a couple episodes and I was going, wow, this is really interesting. But they have everything, you know, from comedy to drama to sci-fi. I know that there's a there is a video out there that tries to do Star Trek episodes, and you can watch Star Trek. Not you know nothing sanctioned by Star Trek, but you can watch episodes from you know they they adapt a book or they make their own episode, and so there's there's many different uh, places you can go out there, but you can also watch them on the OTT through stuff like Coldcast TV. Now you can partner with them. They they make you go through a little process to say, hey, are you is this an actual program that we can really get behind, so on and so forth, because we need we need the top the top shows so people come back and watch your show every single week. So um, that's how you get on Coldcast. Now, if you want to do it absolutely free, and there is this this option lets you do it for free, but the turnaround is all of your video has to be open source. What I'm talking about is archive.org. You can upload, and you can do this through blip.tv. 
you can actually upload to archive.org. But you can take video, you can take audio, and you can just upload it straight up to archive the Internet Archive. This is the Internet cache for a uh, time machine, I guess you could say. So 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, they can find your videos. They can find what you were doing back in 2008, 2009, 2000, 2010. Excuse me. I have a lot of my podcasts in the audio section. Any podcast that's pretty much two years old, I've already uploaded to Internet Archive. And videos I'm going to start doing as well. Because you can get your video, your audio up there. And basically, you have a way. If, if something happens to you or your website and it goes down and you move on, 20 years from now, you're looking for yourself and you say, hey, what, well, what's on the Internet Archive? Find for what I used to do. It's all there. Audio, video. That's awesome. And you can use that audio and video to, uh, to push back to, to websites and blogs and stuff like that. The only problem, like I said, is it's open source. So if you don't, if you don't want to make money off of it, in all reality, then this is the best route to go. You're just making videos, citizen journalism, whatever. You go to Internet Archive. There's a lot more we can we can talk about. There's a lot of other places. Uh, if you're in news, if you like to make stock footage, there's uh, a great place you can go to uh, make stock fit footage to actually sell to people, um, and so much more. But a lot of the stuff goes to something that you want to go to push it to an over-the-top television system. Archive.org, I don't believe has an application just yet, but once again, you can take that link, put it into a blog, and then that blog can be paired with uh, something like uh, techpodcasts.com or uh, blueberry.com, and you can then watch a video through that that means on your Roku, on your Boxy, on your Apple TV, of course, go through iTunes, so on and so forth. So there's many different ways that you can upload your video to sources so you can get your stuff, your video, whatever you're doing, up on an over-the-top television source. And, of course, channels will be coming uh, within five years. I bet you there'll be enough channels out there that will be looking for people to, to create content for. You'll be able to put it up anywhere. It's just a place of where you're going to put the actual video. Will they have a hosting service for you? Once again, do not put your video on the same place that you have your website. Because if anything happens and that video goes viral, your website goes down. And it's and nobody will watch it at that point. So you want to keep them separate. That's the key right there. So find yourself a service that you can afford and can help you not only in the fact of, of, uh, of putting your video out, but also maybe even making some money off of the whole thing. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to uh, call me. My number is 608-205-4378. Or my email is geekazine at gmail.com. If you have any questions on this whole process, uploading videos. Uploading videos on Blip is just as simple as going to the upload, say where the video is, put in all your details, put in all the tags and the keywords, let it upload, and go from there. So, And that's basically it. So once again, if you have any comments or questions, what you like, what you don't like about the show, if you're watching the show on Roku, please give me a star or a two. If you're watching it on iTunes, please rate that. Give me some comments. Let me know what you like, what you don't like about the OTT over at Geekazine. You can find all the shows at ott.geekazine.com. Once again, ott.geekazine.com. We'll be back next week with another episode of the OTT, and hopefully we'll have a, another guest on talking about a product that resides in the OTT over-the-top television. Does this, is this a video that will make you think about, you know, maybe I should snip my cable and go to Internet TV? Let me know, geekazine at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. My name is Jeffrey Powers, and until next week, we will see you later for the OTT.